everyone. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. How are you doing this week? I mean, the energy is like, wow. We've had a lot of CMEs coming in, um, M-class flares and X-class flares from the sun. We're still getting more. And so we've had a lot of geomagnetic storms happening. Um, just a few days ago, it was sort of at its height. I want to say around October 3rd, we really had some intense energy. And so you might be feeling that coming in like today, I just have like this headache that nothing can touch. It's just going to be there until this energy sort of dies down. So during this time period, it's easy to feel a kind of overwhelmed and over it <laughs> and a little bit grouchy. At least some of us get grouchy. Um, so just make sure that you're doing everything you can to help ground and center yourself. So make sure that you're drinking lots of water, maybe putting a little bit of sea salt, like pink Himalayan sea salt in your water to help you ground and get all those uh, trace minerals that you need at the cellular level, as well as literally going outside, putting your feet on the ground, maybe taking salt baths with like salt and magnesium. I mean, there's so many different ways you can help yourself anchor and ground and just be patient and gentle with yourself as you're moving through all of this energy. So this week, I wanted to share with you an experience I had during a QHHT session. So as you might know, I am a quantum healing hypnosis practitioner. And for those of you who aren't familiar with quantum healing hypnosis, this is a hypnosis method developed and created by Dolores Cannon, um, who has over 19 books available based on what she's learned in her sessions. And basically what they're about is they're about healing and they're about understanding. And in these sessions, we get to view relevant past lives because many of us have had multiple past lives. So we get to view the relevant past lives um, that are in alignment with what we desire to know from ourselves, as well as talk to our higher self inside the session and even receive healing inside the session, physical healing. It's amazing. I, every time I do one of these sessions, I am amazed at what comes through people, that kind of information, as well as uh, listening to their stories. You get to meet them at different time periods and hear about their lives and um, they always come back with so much detail and it's like it's just so exciting so if you are interested in doing a quantum healing hypnosis session i'm currently taking in-person clients only i am in washington state and if you are in washington state or want to come to washington state i would love to do a qhht session with you you can reach me at my email address right here or you can go to my website at blithestarlight.com and go to my contacts page and reach out and um, we can see if we can set up a session uh, but what I wanted to bring to you was some really interesting information that came through a recent session I did. And this information was coming from a person who, her, on, a, on a higher level, is a healer being. This is the type of be being that she is. There's so many different types of beings out there. You know, we're not just, you know, if you feel like you're a starseed, it's easy to kind of tie it to a planet or to an alien race, and, and some of us have that, but many of us are energetic beings of all different types with all different functions, um, and we it wouldn't look like what we think in our mind. We wouldn't look like little green people or tall white or blue or, or feline. Some of us have that going on, but a lot of us have something you we've never even heard of going on, and it's so fascinating to see it and meet them. So this person has a healer being essence, and their their primary mission is to go around to different different places and provide healing. So different places within the universe and provide healing as well as teach healing. And when this being was coming through and, and talking, she confirmed something that I was just like, this is, I know this to be true. Um, and she had talked about the fact that the body is the easiest thing to heal. The body is the easiest thing to heal. What we often struggle with 
on this plane is nothing to us when we recognize our energetic form and we are coming from that place the body is like so easy to heal and that's why inside a quantum healing hypnosis session you can have spontaneous healing happening because the body is really easy to heal um but what was interesting about what this being said when it came through uh because the person works as uh, a therapist, a physical therapist, therapy type healer in this now life. Uh, but what the being had said that came through, what, which was so fascinating, is she said that a lot of the people coming to her are playing at being healed. And I was like, whoa, what does that mean? What we're playing at being healed? And she said, um, not all, but many people think that when the body's done some kind of physical healing that they're healed but it made it clear that that healing is actually quite temporary and it will revert back eventually to its um, being out of alignment or in pain if there isn't soul healing work done so the the real healing when we are actually healed is at the soul level. When you say it out loud, it does make sense. But what was interesting is she said there were a lot of people playing at being healed, meaning they were taking the physical healing as if I'm healed. And it's like they stopped short of true healing. Um, and she said it's the people who actually heal are taking it all the way down to the soul level, right? So this is where we're doing our our shadow work, we're doing inner child work, we're actually sitting with whatever message the body brings up, we're actually sitting with it and trying to understand, um, integrate and have compassion and forgiveness for whatever we need to do to be there to truly heal. So it was interesting when the, the being said people are playing at being healed. So it got me thinking about like, where in our lives we're focused on the surface of healing versus that deep work and that deep work is the work that I mean even people who do the work we sometimes want to avoid that work just because it can be a really painful area to go to and it reminds me of a metaphor I heard when I was a in my teens I remember I was at a, a lecture at a unity church listening to a lecture and it, the words that this person said impressed upon me so much. I must've been like 13 or 14 at the time, but impressed upon me so much that I've, I've kept this visual and it makes sense. And what they showed me was they said, at your core, imagine yourself as a brilliant, flawless diamond. You are this brilliant, flawless gem, absolutely perfect and exquisite, in your in your beauty and your light it, it's perfect right and our experiences the traumas that we have over time become a type of scar tissue that builds up around this gen, gem so i sort of visualize this beautiful diamond with this pulsating you know really raw and tender scar tissue building up around it and if we're not aware that the scar tissue is building up and try to heal that what we do is we sort of cover over it and she's like imagine that you put like a paper mache shell around that scar tissue and that's sort of the same as like covering over things or only working on the surface all we're doing is building a shell around the pain and we haven't healed until we reveal the diamond underneath and so the work of soul healing is to not only crack the shell, which I think physical healing can do, it can crack the shell, it can make your the soul work more accessible, especially if you're listening to the body. Um, Julia Cannon, who's Dolores's daughter, wrote a great book called Soul Speaks, and it talks about how the physical correlates with the emotional and how you can tell what your body's trying to tell you. There's a lot of great books around that any of them will work but there seems to be consistent things that come up in these hypnosis sessions that they had tracked and noticed that it's if it's coming up like something in the shoulder or something in the wrist or the legs for example the legs if you have pain in your legs as an example it's resistance to moving forward 
So something, there's something there about needing to heal. Why am I resistant to moving forward? And if we actually work at that level, the body will spontaneously heal as soon as you're addressing it because the body is a messenger. And going back to that metaphor of the diamond, if all we're doing is addressing the messenger, maybe we peel back that um, paper mache a little bit, but then what happens is the trauma, the, the scar tissue is exposed and it's still very tender, it's still very raw. And so when we're in an unconscious state, all we want to do is paper that shit up. <laughs> we just want to cover back over that. That's too much. And what this entity, the healing entity in my session was saying is that we actually need to go in and scrape away that scar tissue. When you start to see the diamond, that's when you've healed. So I hope this message is resonant for you. It really gets you to think about it. It really gets you to think about, um, you know, it. I think it's innocent. I don't think people are going around not wanting to do the work. I think that they really thought just addressing the body is the work. And that's that's very much sort of like a disconnected level when you're disconnected from that bigger truth, with the energy behind it and the understanding that the body is trying to give you the message that you're not listening to at an intuitive level, right? We always get the messages lightly as a, a direct message of, hey, pay attention to this. And the more we ignore it, the deeper it goes until it's like in the body and then you have to deal with it. So I don't think that people play at healing in a manipulative way, like they're going to somehow cheat the system. I just don't know that they know that it's not going to heal until it's healed at the soul level. So this encourages us to continue to do the work, to seek out ways in which we can become more consciously aware of of what we're reacting to, what trauma is waiting to be healed, um, and what part of us wants to reintegrate. And as we do that, the body just heals. It's so cool. So with that, let's do this week's Karma Cards. All right, so if you're new to Karma Cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what is your message for us this week? And I have two sets of answers, one in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune in with your beautiful intuition and feel, what do you need for this week? Do you need action related answers or do you need outcome related answers? And of course, you can always choose both. And while you're deciding, let me tell you the timing for this week's reading. It is for October 5th through October 12th. And let's look at the flavor for this reading. All right, so we've got the planet Mercury, which thankfully has moved out of retrograde. It's now stationing direct. Uh, it'll be fully direct on October 16th. So things are getting better here for most people. But this means we're going to be doing a lot of expressing, communicating, and thinking. And the sign of Leo. So we're going to be looking at our sovereignty, our leadership, and our creativity. In the ninth house of mental expansion, this is the house that is uh, ruled by Sagittarius. So we're going to be looking at how we're expanding our mind or expanding our knowledge. It's really interesting that we've got um, all of this mental energy with creativity in the middle. So I can't wait to see what it says. All right, your spiritual action is to communicate leadership as if it or they came from God. That feels pretty straightforward to me. So again, we are standing in our sovereignty and we're communicating our sovereignty, our leadership, right? And to, to be a leader is literally to show the way forward, right? So all we're doing is we are standing in our own sovereignty and recognizing the leadership within us and showing the way rather than telling the way or or commanding the way, we are showing the way forward as if you are directed by God, for you are. You are directed by the pure source energy coming through you right now, that higher self energy that's absolutely 100% connected to all that is. So let that lead you, let it show you how to stand in your leadership and, and let it communicate it through your action versus communicating it through words. 
mental action at this time, analyze the creativeness of philosophies and laws involved. If we take it to the topic we we're talking about, analyze the philosophies and the laws involved, we want to look at why is it we're not truly healed until we heal at the soul level and contemplate that information today. Because again, you know, healing, it's like there's a, there's a cutaneous layer or the top layer and then there's the subcutaneous that deeper layer and really it's saying we have to go a lot deeper to really resolve any issue that you might have whether you think it's a physical issue or not if we're just looking at the physical we're missing the true healing we're just sort of fixing it for now right we're papering over until that all breaks apart and gets exposed again so really think about um, why it is you need to go deeper with healing. Physical action. Let your mind tell you how to do what you want and to do it in a big way. So the mind, the conscious mind, is going to be the director of how you manifest. So you really want to think about where do you want to focus? That's what you can control with your conscious mind is what am I going to bring my focus to right now? Um, as you do that, you're directing your subconscious mind to give whatever you're focusing on form. We talked about this in the last Karma card. So if you find that interesting, check out that episode so you can go deeper into that concept. But really figure out where you're going to focus and let yourself go there and let yourself fully enact it out. So it's like they're asking us to not get sucked up in... It's not a time for small action, it's a time for bigger action. All right, now let's check out the outcomes for Mercury and Leo in the ninth house of mental expansion. The spiritual outcome is the awareness of self-confidence to create spiritual values. Ooh, I like this one a lot. I feel like as we are getting all these consciousness upgrades, which is what all this solar energy is doing, right? It's increasing our level of consciousness, which raises us out of third density consciousness through fourth and up into fifth, okay? As we're getting that, we are refining our values and our values are, are so important to us because more than personality, our values on a deep level tell us who we are. And when we are in alignment with those values, we feel so good. And when we're out of alignment, we feel so miserable. So this is letting us know that we're actually going to be increasing and refining like a high tune, higher tuning of these values. Um, more or um, more intricate layers of them are going to appear and we're going to be reaching for that. Um, and this it starts with the awareness that we can. So how cool is that? Mental outcome at this time. Many thoughts from or about taking a chance on long-range thinking or travels. When I read that, what I get is it's really time to like think about what comes next, right? We're creator beings and we must spend time thinking about what comes next and not just what we're being presented. Again, I, I'm just really be aware that your observational power is your creative power. What you are giving your focus to is what you give form to. So it's important for us to really spend time thinking about your future. What happens as the as this flash, the solar flash occurs? What happens after you ascend? What's go, what's it going to look like? What are um the institutions that will be around you and how will they operate? I mean, really giving yourself time to sort of flesh it out because that's actually an important part of what happens afterwards. I mean, you'll get more information. You'll get a lot of fine tuning during uh, up to and during and, and post this solar flash. So it's not like you have to have it all figured out right now, but it is a good idea to think about what's that going to look like? What's it? What's the shift? What do you want it to look like? What is it? You know, how does energy work over there? How does um, food work over there? How does housing work over there? How is it all going to work together? Is there something that carries through that feels the same to you? Or is it radically shifted? Is it radically different? It's something that, again, it's as you bring your attention to it and you're focusing on 
what you want it to look like. You're actually helping pull in its form. Um, so we're being asked to, you know, take a chance on doing that. Go in there. And then you can also take this reading literally as if you're going to go on um, a long range trip. That might be true for some people, but I actually keep getting this is very much about the mental expansion. So it's really about going into the future that you want and spending time there. Um, a great resource that I have is on my podcast. There's an episode on the Modern Mystic Soul podcast called the Paradise Timeline Meditation. And it's a bonus episode. You can check it out and listen to it. It is like a little mini guide getting you to sort of think about what does it look like as we transition through all of this. And it gives you prompts to think about different things that might be in your life as we have ascended and moved to the next level. So give that a listen. It's on my podcast. You can find that on anywhere you like to listen to podcasts. And finally, let's look at the physical outcome. Many words resulting from the impressiveness of what is to be shared. Feel like as you tap into all of this information, tapping into your own leadership, tapping into how to deeply heal, as well as tapping into your future, your timeline that you're going to, all of that. Um, it really cracks you open, as well as the, the incoming tweaking of or awareness of new spiritual values. As those start coming in and really um, taking shape inside each of us, I feel like so much information is coming forward and we naturally want to express it. Um, it's just like you, you can't hold it in. You want to share it and you want to hear other people's experiences. And I hope that we really do start feeling that. I hope that we get to experience people sharing more the visions that they're having of what is coming because so many people are holding these visions. And you probably are too. Maybe you've already seen it. Maybe you've seen it in your dreams. Maybe you've spent extensive time meditating or contemplating on the topic. It Let it be shared. Let it inspire other people. None of us have to choose what someone else is choosing. But let what you hear inspire you. And, and like uh, Abraham Hicks says, take it, take the pieces you like and bring it into your own creative workshop to help you build that future those values, right? And the healing that you want to see in your life. And with that, I hope you have a beautiful week. Mwah. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you know the next time I release a new video. Until then, stay magical.